I've been getting a few questions about how to uh, size a hand or how to check uh, size measurements uh, from uh, the photograph that uh, several of the uh, Enable group uh, makers are using to um, create their hands. So I thought I would uh, make a, a short tutorial on how to uh, uh, how I do this and, and how um, you might be able to do this in a classroom uh, for those of you who are teaching students uh, how to uh, use uh, CAD programs. So I'll begin first with um, uh, a drawing or a, uh, an image that uh, I've received uh, from a, a current client and <clears throat> take you through uh, how, to, uh, how to how to size this using my, my method that I typically use. Uh, for this uh, tutorial I'll be utilizing a program called Rhinoceros uh, 3D and um, I use this uh, as, a, as an educator. Um, the prices are, are quite reasonable. You'll notice here that uh, students and teachers save 80%, 80 um, and this is actually what we use in uh, my digital craft research lab, um, and uh, I teach my students uh, how to use. You'll also note that if you are a uh, Mac user, uh, the Rhino is actually currently in um, uh, development, and so you can actually use it for free right now. Um, it basically, you're able to download a, a new version every month uh, for free. Uh, again, if you're a PC user, uh, you can um, actually receive a, a trial uh, version of Rhino, uh, but you will also see that uh, you can get a, a full version here uh, as well. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'll be uh, opening up uh, my Mac version of Rhino, and um, <clears throat> you'll notice that when you first get into the program, you're faced with uh, four viewports that allow you to uh, uh, draw draw in those viewports, and everything uh, relates to each other within those draw uh, those view viewports. Um, in this uh, instance, we'll want to make sure that we're checking our dimension styles. Uh, typically, our our um, models that we'll be importing are in millimeters, so I'll make sure and change my units to millimeters. We'll say yes to this. Close that. Now, um, I'll be working in the top view, uh, again, as we'll be bringing in our models uh, into this top view. You'll notice that you can actually scroll out, and uh, you'll get outside of the grid extents. Right-clicking and dragging will move you, uh, will pan, and then uh, using your scroll button will we'll zoom in and out. Um, and to begin this, we'll start with uh, importing our uh, image, our JPEG image that we've been sent. So we'll start with uh, view background bitmap and place and we'll be um, we'll receive this uh, window that we can actually click on the image that we received and we'll open this and then you'll notice that uh, over here in the command bar on the left hand side you'll see the it'll be asking for instructions so the first corner of your image can be placed again it does not matter uh, aspect ratio will be locked uh, based on the image. Uh, the image will be imported. Again, the command will still be open. There's options for changing uh, from grayscale and uh, other various things. But for now, we'll just go ahead and say done to that, or you can hit enter to end that command. Um, I'll come over to my layers uh, tab over here. You'll notice that right now we're in the default layer, which is uh, black. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Uh, circle beneath to highlight the red layer. Now I'm in the red layer. Now again, I can zoom in by using my scroll button. I'm going to come over to the left hand uh, menu here and I'll be able to select a polyline and I will zoom in uh, very closely and select uh, at the one inch mark uh, and we'll create, uh, it, it, your command bar is asking for the start of your polyline. So the start of my polyline will be right here. I can zoom out and I can go ahead and go up to 13 since we started at the one inch mark on the ruler. And I can click and then hit enter uh, and that will end my line. Now if I zoom out, uh, at any point I can go up to the dimensions tab and I can click on linear dimension. And if I've placed a straight line, I can use this. Or if it's a, if it's a, uh, if your ruler is at a slight angle, you can actually use uh, uh, or at least the ruler in the image is at a slight angle. You can use align dimension. I'll go ahead and use that just so you can see. And then over here in the lower left-hand corner, you have the um, the uh, object snaps 
uh, tab, you can click on end so that you're able to easily snap to the end of that polyline, snap to the other end, and then drag out and you'll be placing a, um, a dimension unit uh, for that particular polyline, which it reads that it is, that it is 135.62 millimeters um, since we're working in millimeters. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll actually go and uh, do a conversion uh, and so I can see that uh, 12 inches, which we've drawn for our line, equals 304.8. Uh, so we'll make sure that we uh, write that number down. And then we can go ahead and go back to Rhino. And we'll be able to know that this should equal 304.8 if we had the uh, JPEG in the right um, uh, at the right scale in our our modeling program. So what I'll do is um, to, to make that right I will go ahead and hit view background bitmap. This is the same command we used earlier except this time we have other options and we will click on scale. Uh, when scale is selected we'll be able to then click the endpoints of this line and you'll notice that in the command bar over here um, it's asking for a second reference point um, obviously you could click and drag, but we want to actually lock that into a certain value, and that value is going to be 304.8. So we can just sim simply start typing 304.8, and then you'll hit enter, and you'll notice that it um, locks my positioning on my line. And I can hold down shift, and that will help lock me into position, and then click and that has now sized our photograph to the proper dimensions. And you'll notice that we only um, scaled the uh, background bitmap. So we'll have to go in now and select by clicking and dragging over the drawn line. And I can hit then transform, scale 2D. I'll click on this endpoint and this endpoint. And then I will type in 304.8 and then enter. And you'll notice that if we zoom in closely, we should now be touching the one inch mark and also the 13 inch mark. And if we look at our dimensions, if we've had those highlighted along with the polyline, it should now read uh, 304.8. So now our image and our polyline have um, both been scaled um, to uh, match our, our uh, virtual world within the uh, Rhino program. Now you'll notice that the grid is starting to interfere with my image so what I'm going to do is just use um, view background bitmap and I can actually move that image over so I'll just click uh, anywhere in space here just move that over and then um, if I want to I can move um, just by typing M-O-V-E I can move the original line over. If I hold down shift, it'll lock it into position. And I can bring it back over. Again, this isn't necessary now that we've got the image scale, but if you just want to have that for reference. The next thing that I usually do is I'll go ahead and draw a polyline um, across the wrist area. And uh, usually there's a, a mark that someone has, you know, obviously drawn uh, uh, in some of the photographs that we receive. And now that this line is drawn, I can actually uh, pull a dimension from this, again, either using linear if it's a straight line or a line dimension if, if it's at an angle. Uh, I'll just use a line here. Uh, and then we can use, uh, you'll, you'll see that we have this at 52.07. Now the next step is to uh, import your STL files. You can actually, and if you've used Handomatic, you can just import those files just for uh, double checking and reference. Uh, in my case, I'm going to import um, some files that <clears throat> I downloaded from Thingiverse um, and so I'll just start importing these fi these STL files one at a time so I'll import the gauntlet and it'll ask if you want to import this the STL models are in millimeters or mil millimeters I'll say import and then I'll wind up with um, whoops let me just deselect here and bring this over and then um, again, you know, file import, and we just work through those um, 
various uh, models. And you know, it's very important at this point that you bring in all of the components oops, that you uh, import all of the components for the particular uh, uh, design that you're that you're planning on using. So let's bring in all of those components. It's important because you're you're going to be scaling um, all of these components, and you want to scale them at the same time so that everything still fits. Let's get all of our parts in. Do the uh, proximals. Um, let's go ahead and then get our last file here will be our palm. All right, so now um, we have all of our components. Obviously, uh, we will be uh, duplicating uh, the proximals uh, for, for the uh, fingers and then also the hex pins. Uh, I can wait to do this after the fact. <clears throat> right now, the most important um, two pieces are the gauntlet and the palm. And you'll, you'll notice that if I zoom in closely, um, we, we can basically bring these two uh, objects together. I'll select one of the um, pieces and I'm going to bring, going to bring the um, gauntlet and the palm down together and if we zoom in uh, uh, very very closely you can see that we want to try to align this dark region where it's a little tighter mesh along with the darker this is the area where uh, on the gauntlet this is the area where uh, the uh, pivot pin or the Chicago screw uh, uh, whichever one you're using will we'll actually go through. So you, if I go in and actually pull a dimension uh, using linear dimension off the inside of the gauntlet, because the gauntlet will be on the inside uh, uh, of the entire hand, I can actually lock down again with a sh holding shift, I can lock down a uh, straight line, uh, zoom in uh, closely, and I can pull a measurement. So you'll see that you know we're approximately um, 49.8 or around 50 millimeters for the distance at the wrist and that's where this line that we've drawn should uh, should hit so if I were to take and just select by clicking and dragging across those two components and I bring those over you'll notice that um, this is this is very tight uh, uh, for you know the uh, client to be able to to use so um, we want to make sure that we that we size that uh, properly so we'll make sure and actually pull this off to one side. So we want to be uh, allowing for um, enough uh, room for both the head of the Chicago screw, which will be uh, right, right here along the inside gauntlet, and then also the additional foam that will be lining the inside of the gauntlet. So I usually try to allow, uh, you know, for, for around uh, five to 10 millimeters in excess uh, in, that, in that pivot uh, region. So we're going to go ahead and just then take all of the components that we have. Uh, again, these, these are all of the hand component, the STLs that you I imported. Now, if you're using hand, Handomatic, um, again, you're just going to be checking these components. You're not going to necessarily be scaling them unless you need to do additional uh, scaling for fitment. Um, so I'll just make sure that all of those components are selected. And then uh, I'll, I'll look at the number that I have here. We've got uh, 52.07. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this hand up by uh, 10 millimeters. I know that I'm going to probably need enough room for you know residual uh, 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 finger or thumb here 
and then um, I, I know also that the forearm tapers quite a bit so I'm going to make sure that we scale at least 10 millimeters uh, just this initial time to, to be able to check fitment. Um, so I'll, I'll probably go ahead and even and sneak this up to about you know 12 millimeters in, in, you know, additionally. So, so if we're at uh, 50 millimeters here, we're going to go ahead and select all of our components. We'll hit Transform, Scale, 3D this time because we're dealing with three-dimensional objects. And I'll come in and, and, and get very close here to the, uh, to the location of my edge of my model. I'll click on that and then do the same over here. Again, holding down Shift to lock us into position. And I'll take that and click. And now you'll notice that we can, again, click and drag to scale this object up. Or I can just go ahead and type in a value for what we would like that to be. So if we were at 50 millimeters, we're going to go ahead and go up to 62 to add our, our additional 12 millimeters. So 62 and then Enter. Now you'll notice that it goes. The model goes uh, if it has a dimension on it. Go, uh, it's, it's reading our dimension, and again, I wasn't very close here to my to my um, model, so that's why this is reading just slightly under 62. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and delete that. And again, I'll just pull one more dimension off of this uh, by zooming in a little bit more closely, and I should be able to move across here and lock this down again and I now get uh, my 62 millimeters that we had typed in. So the great thing is all of the components have now been scaled at the same time and we now can take uh, the palm and gauntlet, like I said, that, were, that are our most important uh, um, pieces to, to check for fitment and I can try to line up with the center of the hinge uh, area and you'll notice that the, our client's arm is actually at a, a slight angle so this kind of makes it a little bit difficult to uh, to size but all we have to do is uh, rotate our our model we can just do that by hitting um, transform and rotate and I can rotate from here just slightly and we can bring this model over and see how our fitment is. And I can see already we're probably going to have to do a, a, a little bit of heating to the gauntlet in this particular case. It probably will not be the case in most of your situations, but what I'm looking here, uh, looking for here uh, is really to see if the palm fits inside of the palm region on the 3D printed component. Now you'll notice I do have, uh, I've got a line that you can see that follows right along here. This is the interior region of the palm and I can see right around here as well. So if we're not going to do any editing to this mesh to be able to allow clearance for uh, the re residual um, uh, thumb, I can go ahead and either um, uh, scale this just a little bit larger to make sure or again check and make sure that I'm at the proper uh, location for the pivot. I, I, it could be such a thing that my the wrist pivot is a little bit high and so then you can see I'm, I'm starting to get inside of there. So um, due to the fact that the forearm um, is a little bit wide, I'm just going to go ahead and scale this a little bit more. Now again, if you're going to scale it, make sure you come in and, and select the rest of your components so that when you scale this, um, you'll be able to scale everything at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and transform, scale 3D, and again, I'll zoom in closely. And it'll be easier this time we can pick up the end points of that dimension unit and this time we might go ahead and scale up to uh, you know 65 let's just try that and then hit enter and now we've we've picked up a little bit more room I have a feeling that um, actually we'll be able to make this work um, and uh, that the fitment will be uh, proper here for us so we're, we're within our uh, regions and then again we may have to do some additional padding um, out in this area, in the hinge area, to make sure that we kind of make that for a, a nice fit uh, for a client. Uh, and then again, a little bit of uh, heating to the gauntlet to get it, be able to flare that so that there's a proper fit there. Um, again, I, I don't want to make it too large, um, but uh, we may have to do some testing here. I usually recommend that um, people print just the palm, and if you have uh, access to, um, to your client, you know, that's cl living close by, uh, you know, send the palm or, or have them come in and actually fit this 
and make sure that you uh, there's no issues with uh, rubbing inside of that palm area. Um, when you're completed, you know, doing the proper sizing, um, you're simply going to uh, deselect uh, just by clicking up in space, and then you will re-export. So you'll you'll select just one component at a time. You'll say File, Export Selected. Make it a little pop-up menu where we want to save this. And this time you'll make sure that you select an STL, that's a stereolithography file, and you can create uh, a new folder if you'd like. And you can call this, you know, scaled hand, create, and then um, in this case I'll just name each piece, we're, we're uh, exporting the palm here, so I'll just say palm, and I'll say, say export, you'll get a pop-up menu and you'll ask if you want uh, A, uh, S, C, or you want binary, we'll just stick with binary, smaller file size, and say export, and then we'll do the same thing for all of our components, file, export, selected, uh, this will be our uh, fingers, And then again, binary, export. And we'll just do this for each uh, file. And then eventually you should be able to uh, access those particular uh, files. And uh, those will be right here, scaled hand. And these individual STLs will be able to be uh, imported into uh, your slicing software for your particular 3D printer and you can arrange those on the bed uh, as a grouping or if you'd like to print them individually that's uh, fine also and uh, that should give you the proper sizes that you need. Uh, I hope this helps uh, those of you who are uh, those especially you, you teachers who are working with your classes uh, this is a, a great way to be able to uh, share with your students and, and give them some uh, experience in doing CAD modeling and, uh, and sizing and scaling. And uh, again, I think you'll find the uh, Rhino program quite useful in, uh, in being able to create the models for your students and, and helping them to uh, print hands. And we really appreciate everyone who's uh, giving input and uh, helping spread the word on how to, how to get these hands to uh, people in need. So uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, again, I hope this helps. Bye.